How you doing everybody? Welcome back. Hope y'all are doing good. Just a little short video. Um, just left from Walmart. Went to go get a few pieces of chicken. Had a taste for some lemon pepper. Ooh, ooh. Some lemon pepper chicken. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll try to give y'all a little bit of insight into what I be doing. Since majority of the time when I am making a video, I'm rolling. But uh, for me, I do a lot of thinking when I'm in the car, when I'm driving. My radio isn't working right now. I think it blew a fuse or whatever. It hasn't been working for a few months or whatever. But even when, when my radio was working, um, I didn't really have it on because I just like to take the time to think you know, reflect on myself in regards to different things I'm going through. Um, reflect on my downfalls, where I need to improve at. And just reflect overall on the word of God in different situations. I may be praying or whatever it is. And so I was driving down the street and... I passed by the first time, but I didn't think anything about it. And it was a funeral. And it's, sa it's Saturday. There was a lot of people at the funeral. And then as I came came back by, I was going to look over to, you know, be nosy. I was going to look over there to be nosy. Because that's what, you know, you do. <laughs> uh, there's a funeral. Or there's, a, there's something going on. A crowd of people. You look over there to be nosy to see, hey, what's... What's going on? Do I do I see somebody I know or whatever? You know, that's just how we are as as mankind. And as I was riding by, like I said, the second time, because I was you know, going back the same way or whatever, and I went to go look, the Spirit spoke to me and said, mind your business. Mind your business. And it was at a church building and I pondered on that for a minute and I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with me looking. But, you know, when God speaks something to your spirit, it's not necessarily, oh, you need to mind your business. You had no reason to looking over there. There's something deeper to it. And he's using that situation to get your attention or to plant that word, to plant that seed in you. And so as I pondered on it and I meditated on it, on his word, now I'm making this video right now. As believers, we need to mind our business. Christ said that he was about his father's business. He came here to be about his father's business, to handle what they call kingdom business, <laughs> to preach the gospel. He didn't come here to get into get involved in all this extra stuff. They tried to involve him in it, but Christ didn't come for that. He came to mind his business. And minding his business was and is minding his father's business. Therefore, if Christ has sent you to be about his business, which means being about the father's business then he has called you to mind your business mind your business all this extra stuff that you getting involved in and you putting yourself into that ain't got nothing to do with you nothing to do with you now when you are put in that situation that car is squeaking um when you are put in that situation that cross Paths with somebody else's business then that's different but you being here you're supposed to be about kingdom business as they say which is what the preaching of the gospel the speaking of what whatever God gives you to speak you want to go out into the world you know I understand because I had that same mentality when I was first born again you want to you want to save everybody and then you start to grow, <coughs> you start to grow into, um, 
you start to grow into, into the uh, the scriptures and whatnot, and then you see that everybody ain't gonna be saved. You want everybody to be saved, but it's impossible for everybody to be saved because you already got people that's already dead and gone that are in hell right now. So it's impossible for everybody to be saved because everybody has, they have to make their own choice. Now, everybody could have been saved, but again, everybody, <coughs> everybody makes their, makes their own choice or whatnot. And you see what the scriptures say about uh, many are called, but few are chosen. How many, how many of there be that be saved, Lord? Many are called, few are chosen. Narrow is the way, narrow is the path. So mind your business. Mind what God has called you, called you to mind. You over there trying to get in everybody else's marriage, and then your marriage ain't even where it's supposed to be at. You need to be minding your business and taking care of your own uh, family, your own marriage before you talking about even considering getting in somebody else's business. Then, because you didn't got, got involved in some mess or whatever, now the husband, they coming after you, trying to uh, trying to kill kill you or whatever. Don't like y'all ain't never heard it or seen it. Oh, that's, that's, that's too extreme. No, that ain't extreme. That stuff happens every every day. And then you didn't you didn't got involved in somebody else's business and they didn't tell you to get in their business or whatever. Let's say the husband beating on the wife. You trying to help out. Ain't nobody told you to, to jump in it. You just you just jumping in it. And then the wife she sides with the husband still. And now you looking like boo-boo the fool because you trying to help her out or help him out sometimes. Hey, sometimes it's the man that's getting beat. And now they ain't teamed up against you. Now you looking stupid. Now I ain't saying if you in a situation where you know what I'm saying, you out in public and something going down or whatever, I ain't telling you that you ain't supposed to speak up. You know, if I'm in public Walmart, somebody beating on a beating on a woman or whatever, oh, I guarantee I, I'm probably gonna say something. Nah, well, I ain't gonna guarantee if I'm probably, I am gonna say something. You know, situations like that where, you know, it crossed your paths. But a lot of people, even believers, you going out here, you getting the stuff that ain't got no, you got no business getting into. And first and foremost, the problem is you ain't even handling the business that you supposed to be handling. You know what I'm saying? How you gonna go getting other folks' business and you ain't even doing what you're supposed to do in the first place? How I'm gonna go help somebody else's family and I ain't helping my own? How, I'm, how else, how I'm gonna go help somebody else's children and, you know, be a fatherly figure to them because they may not have no father or whatever. If I ain't being a, a, a father to my own children, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's what I'm uh, I'm talking about right there. We are supposed to be about God's business. You see this shirt? This is my business. You see this hat? This is my business. It's mine. I bought this hat. This is my hat. Somebody got my hat. Hey, man, that's my hat. It's my business. Why you got my hat? I got your hat because I got your hat. What you going to do about it? You want another one, man? You didn't have to steal from me. I would have gave it to you. Because it's not that serious. It's, it's a hat. Jesus said if somebody uh, does something like that, then you go two miles. It ain't always easy. <laughs> Oh, it ain't always easy. And then you also have to use judgment in regards to that. That doesn't mean let people walk over you. It means use wisdom in regards to somebody trying to have power over you because somebody steals something from you. They're taking power from you. They're saying that you don't run nothing. I come and take your stuff anytime I want. So God is saying to overcome, overcome their power with the true power he has given you. Because they'll take a hat or whatever and God will give you 10 hats, just for an you know, example. Hat costs, you know what I'm saying? Some of these hats is expensive. I think I pay like $5 for this hat. So, you know, 
they take a five dollar hat, God give me twenty five dollars to buy. You know what I'm saying? X amount more hats. I mean, hats that is, you know, three or four more hats. That's what that's what he's saying. Don't give these people power over you by their evil. He ain't saying be stupid and hey, just come in and take everything, guys. Like, yeah, just come steal from me anytime you want. That's foolishness. Does God let people steal from him anytime he wants? No, they steal from him. There's consequences to that. They keep on doing it. Like, okay, I understand why you did it the first time. Hey, you know, you were struggling or whatnot. Now let me put you on, get you a job or let me help you out. Oh, you want to keep on stealing? Oh, guess what? You fired. That's just common sense. You're not going to keep nobody on your job, on your business. They keep on stealing from you. Are you going to keep on giving them chances? No, you got to go. I still love you, but you got to go. So, um, you know, with, with, with so much going on in the world, <laughs> mind your business. Stop meddling in stuff that you ain't got no business meddling in. And that's even for those who, those of us who are more seasoned in the word. If you ain't got no business studying a certain topic, mind your business. You ain't got no business over there because maybe you're not ready for that. Especially my younger brothers and sisters in Christ, the babes in Christ. If the Lord is putting you in your spirit, leave this alone. You're not ready for this. Then mind your business. What business is that, Brother King? Whatever it is, whatever he is, whatever is right in front of you on your plate, eat your food. That's your business. Don't be looking over here on my plate and you see me with a big old, you know what I'm saying, uh, more food than you got and you trying to reach over and get mine when you ain't finished yours. Now you finish yours, hey, you can, you, I, I'll save you some. You, um, you, uh, eat, you know, eat your food. Then, you know, that you can get this. You reaching over to eat what I got without even asking my permission. You reaching over to eat my food. And you didn't even ask. You taking off my plate. Thinking that you can handle what I'm eating. I can handle it right now. Give it to me. Not realizing that I like spicy food. And when I say spicy, oh, my stuff be spicy. Now, you're not realizing what's over here, what, what's in the ingredients. You reaching over to grab it without asking permission. And now you're over there oh, coughing and, you know what I'm saying, you having a, a, um, a panic attack because you didn't have the spicy food or maybe my stuff was fried in peanut oil and you're allergic to peanut oil. When I could have prepared you something without peanut oil, something that you're not allergic to, or something that you're that you are um, you're ready for. If y'all get the get my drift, I ain't saying that you can't eat off my plate because obviously, if you're listening to this ministry, then you're eating off my plate. But let me prepare the meal for you. Don't come up in my house and tell me how to do this and and do that or whatnot. You can give me suggestions. I wouldn't come to your house and, and, and do that. That's just, that's just respect. I wouldn't come to your ministry and be like, hey, you need to stop doing it this way. I would give you suggestions. But you're going to whip up the meal how God calls you to whip up that meal. You may ask me, hey, Brother King, what you like? Oh, I like this. I like that, man. Okay, cool. I'll make sure I include that in the meal. That's why when you hear me uh, speak, you hear me kind of like going back and forth, back and forth from here over there, here. I'm trying to, I'm like a tree and the tree branches out with different branches. I'm trying to make sure I touch the different branches because I know that I have uh, different types of people that are listening to the videos. You got saved people. You got lost people. You got people that are looking for answers. You got people that are more what we call seasoned. You got uh, babes. You got people that are um, in, in preschool, uh, uh, grade school, middle school, high school, you know, uh, private school, you got all pe all them type of people in different walks of life in regards to their faith, D in different points of, of their faith or whatnot. So I try to touch at least on everything, if it, even if it's just a piece of fruit. Hey, here you go. Piece of fruit, fruit for you that's going to provide some type of uh, nutrition to your body. 
So if your business is first grade education, learning, then guess what? That's your business. You ain't got no business over eating off a, a 12th grade, a 12th grader plate, knowing that you can't handle it. Mind your business and minding your business is minding the business of God, which is the preaching of the gospel. All this extra stuff, you ain't got no business meddling in. These folks out here, uh, let me give you some more examples. They are, they are here rioting. Let's remember the uh, the Ferguson riots. You want to you wanna go out there, you know what I'm saying, do whatever. You ain't got no business out there. That ain't got nothing to do with you. You go out there to preach the gospel. Majority of people are going out there. You ain't going out there to preach no gospel. Let's just be real. You ain't got no business meddling in that. Because if you go do the research on the whole Ferguson thing, you like, man, this is a setup. <laughs> so you tell me you're going to preach the gospel, it's a setup. Now, if God calls you to go there, then hey, you know, hey, you do, you do what God calls you to do. I can't sit there and say that God wouldn't call nobody out there to preach the gospel because that may be your test of obedience. God may be testing you um, to see if you are going to go out there and then he doesn't require you to go out there or he very well may, be, may require you to go out there to test your faith. <laughs> but y'all y'all get my point. A lot of y'all, you, you live in houses, you got a fence. What's on your fence, on your side of your fence, guess what, that's your business. What they're doing over there, they ain't got nothing to do with you. Unless it's impeding on your business, which is your house, your property and stuff like that. You know, they got music going on until, you know what I'm saying, four or five o'clock in the morning on a a, a a Monday or whatever. Like, of course. Hey man, you think you can turn down blase blase? You know, I gotta go to, gotta go to work and everything. Y'all know how it goes. So hopefully y'all got the point I'm making about mind your business. Stop meddling in all this extra stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you because you're going to end up getting yourself hurt. You're going to end up being spiritually hurt and you're going to end up being probably hurt for real. Some of y'all, uh, you dig, you digging in matters in regards to racism and stuff like that when you're not even equipped to handle a conversation like that. Some of you um, um, going out and you saying, saying stuff on Facebook in regards to, to black folks and everything, uh, don't go there. Don't go there because you don't want that heat. You don't want that smoke. I know my people. I know my people. If God ain't called you to go do that, then go, don't go stir up no hornet's nest. I'm not about to go to no KKK um, in the middle of Mississippi talking about some preaching to them and speaking, you know what I'm saying, that the the uh, the Hebrews of the Bible are the so-called blacks. It's not going to happen. Now, if God calls me to do that in the, situ the situation, however I ended up there, then I'm going to do what God called me to do. But I'm not about to purposely go there. That ain't got nothing to do with me. The, what the KKK doing, hey, they do it in their own right. And guess what? I'm going to stay over here in my lane on that narrow path. And then if I need to say something about the KKK, then I will say something about the KKK. But going out the way, I'm going to go address these KKK for what they say. I'm going to let them know who the true Hebrews are. They claim to be Christians. Oh, no. Oh no, they, what they say? Mama didn't raise no food? Nah, man, God didn't raise no food. God didn't raise no food. So on the flip side, don't go out here provoking these black folks because don't think they ain't, won't turn up on you. I know my people, majority of black folks ain't got nothing to lose. Ain't got nothing to lose. You gonna put put it put them in jail like some some of them the uppity ones or whatever, but majority of black folk you going to the hood and all that other stuff or whatnot. I'll keep on playing. You talking about some some niggas? Yeah, I've been around some niggas, and yes, I said it. Even even some of them even scared me. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't fooling with him. I think go go about my business. Even some of my own own people I don't, I don't fool with. I'm like, nah, I ain't going, nah. Nah. So if you got black folks that don't even fool with certain black folk because they that raw, 
you finna hey guys <laughs> don't do it to yourself so hopefully you get the point of what i mean by mind your business now of course if somehow you end up in a situation like that then you walk in the fullness of the power of god and you rebuke the unclean spirits jesus didn't go out searching for unclean spirits you ever notice that they always came to him they came to him wanting the the spirits cast out of people and stuff like that you don't have to go searching for 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 stuff like that it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna be at war you're gonna get your chance to fight oh trust me if you a believer you're gonna get your chance to slaughter some some demons and devils it's pretty awesome it's it's pretty awesome um so rejoice not that the demons and devils are subject to you rejoice that your name is written in the lamb's book of life and mind your business stay in your lane as uh lavar ball said stay in your lane um but when something becomes your business then of course you address it things in regards to christ and christianity and faith and doctrine and all the other stuff and somebody saying something against against the bible that's not true whatever of course that's your business all day you are supposed to defend the faith but i'm again all this extra stuff stay in your lane stay i didn't, I didn't guess what i'm gonna go i'm, I'm gonna say this i'm gonna end, I'm gonna end it with this how do i know this well for one because of other people and for two myself some things you learn the hard way you ain't got no business meddling in that they ain't got nothing to do with you god i'm speaking god speaking to me learn the hard way so guess what i do now i stay in my lane i preach to who god has called me to preach to i reach out to god who god is who god calls me to reach out to and i stay in my lane meaning i take care of my family i go to work i enjoy my family and I live my life that Christ has given me and I'm going to ride off in the sunset. <laughs> I'm going to ride off in the sunset. And as the world uh, gets worse and worse, I'm going to separate myself more and more and ride off into the sunset and go meet Jesus. Stay in my lane. All this extra stuff I used to do, man, it ain't, you know, I learned, I learned valuable lessons from that. But as you, grow in christ and just grow in, in general in life you know you handle situations differently and it's not that i handled those situations wrongly it was just that i was ignorant to a lot of stuff and so of course i can say yeah i would handle it differently but if you know back then but if i'm in those situations again of course now i would handle, handle them um handle them differently why? Because I have more knowledge, more wisdom, more understanding. I'm more seasoned than I was, you know, saying back when I had, you know, the baby face, you know, my beard and everything was, was low, barely had a, had a beard. I always had those genes to grow a beard, but you know, I kept it low, um, compared to now. And, you know, there's different reasons why I grow my beard. One of them is because the, uh, differentiate myself from who I used to be. Um, the ditch differentiate myself as a as a hebrew has nothing to do with because the bible talks about the hebrews were supposed to have beards and if they weren't supposed to do it then they were disobedience i read the scriptures and said okay i, I want to do that i'm not justified by me having my beard i have my beard because i, ha I have my reasons why i want to grow my beard and also to me my beard represents it's, it's like a tree it grows down and up it grows down, it's rooted, it symbolizes strength in different things. That's why you see the hats I be having on sometimes that says beard royalty because the beard was an ancient symbol of royalty. God has a beard. I want to be like my father. So, um, yeah, I'm mind my business, I'm mind my beard business. <laughs> but uh, with that being said, I'm going to close it out. It's kind of hot in here, I'm starting to sweat um i do love each and every one of y'all that are listening to this video all my brothers and sisters in christ rather you be jew or gentile god bless each and every one of you in jesus christ's name as always stay focused for jesus and as you know truth is not debated it is declared